to give you a little start on these, these are my two examples where we're going to cube 3 minus 3i to the third, negative 3 plus 3i to the negative third. First thing I would like you to do is to take this part and break it down 3 minus 3i. Which is the x and which is the y? Which is x, 3 or negative 3? Three. 3. The x is the real part. The y is next to the i. The only reason the i is there is to separate the real from the imaginary. The i doesn't get included in any of the formulas. You can stay there if you want. So then you're going to get the square root of 3 squared plus negative 3 squared. And did you get the square root of 18 for that? Good. So theta is going to be the inverse tangent of y over x. So y is negative 3 and x is 3. So what is the inverse tangent of negative 1? Pi over something. The same x and y, that must be pi over 4, right? And it's negative. So when I rewrite this, what I'm going to have is z1 is 18 to the 1 half power cis cosine plus i sine of negative pi over 4. So we're going to take this to the third eventually, but I just wanted to change it into polar first. That's kind of the hardest. What's that? Square root, yeah. Well, I did that for a reason you're going to see in a minute. So once I have this, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Demov's theorem. And Demov's theorem was really nifty. It was, uh, let's say you had r cis theta to the n. That's going to be r to the n cis n theta. So you multiply the theta by n, kind of log-like, but you still take r to the nth power times that. So we're going to do that. Here goes. So we have z1 is equal to 18 to the 1 half to the third power to the power you multiply 3 halves. Did anybody get that? 18 to the 3 halves? Good. Then this is going to be cis negative 3 times pi over 4 is 3 pi over 4. And there's there's your z1. How many had that for z1? Okay. Any questions on that? You can leave it that. It looks a little weird, though, to square root cubed. But it's okay. Yeah, I like it. So then we're going to do the same thing here. x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to 3. Now, I had a student last couple hours ago said, um, Dr. Sauer, I noticed that if I ever have like a negative 3 plus 2i or a negative 3 minus 2i, that whenever that the real part is negative, I'm going to have to do that plus or minus pi thing because the negative x sends me to quadrants 2 or 3. And I thought that was pretty astute that he could see that. And it does make it a little easier when figuring this out. Inverse tangent of 3 over negative 3. Well, it looks like it's negative pi over 4. But we're sitting here, negative 3 plus 3i. That's a quadrant 2. Well, this isn't in quadrant 2. How do I get this to quadrant 2? Add pi. So this is really 3 pi over 4. And r is just going to be the square root of 18 again, just like it was before. So now I'm going to rewrite this. R, a z2 is going to look like um, 18 to the 1 half power cis cosine plus i sine of 3 pi over 4. And this is going to be to the negative third power this time. So then let's do the powers. Z2 is going to be 18 to the negative 3 halves, 
Don't worry about that. It would be just 1 over 18 to the 3 halves. Cis, negative 9 pi over 4. Now, that's not legal, is it? Oh, and, you, and you determine where it is on the unit circle based on whether the x is positive or negative? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I just plot it, and then I can tell, oh, negative 3 up here. Oh, I'm going to be in quadrant 2, so I'm going to add the pi. We need to take this uh, and put it between negative pi and pi. So I'm going to add 2 pi, 8 pi over 4. So this is going to be the equivalent of 18 to the negative 3 halves, cis, negative pi over 4. Does that sound good? Because I take negative 9 pi plus 8 pi over 4. Looking good. So all that work is to find these two, z2 and uh, Z1, is this it here? Is this it? Okay, so now that we know that, now what we can do is we can multiply and divide them. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take Z1, which is 18 to the 1, 3 halves, times cis negative 3 pi over 4, and I'm going to multiply it by 18 to the negative 3 halves, cis, negative pi over 4. Now tell me, when I multiply those, what's going to happen to 18 to the 3 halves times 18 to the negative 3 halves? It's going to be 18 to the what power? Zero, which is 1. And then what do you do with these things here? You add them up. So this is going to be negative 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 4, which is negative 4 pi over 4, which is the same as negative what? Pi. Is that the same as pi? Yeah. But this is fine. This is good. There's the product of those two. Now, I'm going to try to see if this is going to work. Almost. Almost got it. Now I'm going to take 18 to the 3 halves, cis this, and I'm going to, instead of multiply this time, I'm going to divide. Okay. So if I divide these, I'm going to get, and I'm going to move this up so you can see it. Okay. So if I move this 18... What's 18 to the 3 halves? What do we do if we divide? Add or subtract the powers? Subtract. So if I subtract a negative, it's going to turn it into 18 to the 6 halves. Or 18 cubed. This is going to be cis negative 3 pi over 4 minus a negative pi over 4. And what is... Negative 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 4. Negative 2 pi over 4. If you want to, you could call it negative pi over 2. And for right now, fantastic. <coughs> How are we doing? So could you turn a, a, a rectangular into a polar, take the power, multiply and divide it? Good. So that's what we did yesterday. And a nice review of that.